Good evening, everybody. It's a Friday night, April 9th, 2010. My name's Rich. We're in Phoenixville, and all of that means that it's time for this week's edition of Cheap Red Wine. Tonight's Cheap Red Wine is Mike Schmidt 548 Zinfandel in celebration of the beginning of baseball season. And it's pretty good wine, and profits from the wine Mike Schmidt's profits from the wine benefit the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So, good wine, good cause. And baseball. <coughs> Gotta love baseball. This week's Cheap Red Wine is being brought to you through the support of the Gregory A. and Kimberly A. Christensen Foundation in conjunction with the Andrew, Emma, and Eric Christensen group. The foundation suggested that the topic for this week's cheap red wine be the infamous Mrs. Mary E. Surratt, Mary Elizabeth Jenkins Surratt. It's a good topic because I have spent my entire lifetime pondering Mary Surratt. I've thought a lot about Mary Surratt, I've read quite a bit about Mary Surratt, and I spent 15 seconds printing the Wikipedia entry on Mary Surratt just now. So I can tell you more about her. Wikipedia says, Mary Elizabeth Jenkins Surratt was convicted of taking part in the conspiracy to assassinate Abraham Lincoln. Sentenced to death, she was the first woman executed by the United States federal government and was hanged. She was the mother of John Surratt, also alleged to have been involved in the conspiracy. Here's Mary Surratt's picture. Now, Mary Surratt owned a boarding house in Washington, D.C. in the mid-1860s. One of her son John's friends was John Wilkes Booth, the famed actor. John Surratt and John Wilkes Booth and other friends would often gather at the boarding house to talk about how they were rather disgruntled with Abraham Lincoln. All of them were Confederate sympathizers. They decided to do something about this. The first thing they decided to do was kidnap Abraham Lincoln and perhaps use him as ransom in exchange for a number of Confederate pris prisoners of war. However, things went pretty badly. Things were going pretty badly at that point. This was in late 1864, and uh, things were going badly for the Confederacy. And by early 1865, it was becoming more apparent that the Confederacy was not going to emerge victorious in the war. So Booth's plans changed and he decided that what he was going to do instead was to assassinate Abraham Lincoln. That happened on April 14, 1865, while Lincoln watched a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Uh, Booth escaped with the help of one of the conspirators, David Harold, and uh, got out of D.C., but was captured uh, about a week and a half later and was subsequently killed uh, the night that he was captured. Other conspirators, including Harold, were gathered up and put on trial in June of 1865, and four of them were executed on July 7th, uh, including Mrs. Surratt. Now, my fascination with this began in about 1975, when I was about 10 years old. Somebody gave me a book on the Lincoln assassination, and I was riveted from the beginning, and I have been ever since. And um, I've given a lot of thought to it. I've thought a lot about Mrs. Surratt. Um, there, basically, um, she owned, I, I forget whether I just mentioned this or not, but she owned this house in D.C. This is where the conspirators met, and that's the Wikipedia photo. This is a contemporary picture from the 1860s. This is what the house looks like now. It is now a Chinese restaurant, which I will talk about in um, volume two of the episode. Um, Mrs. Surratt was, was arrested not long after the assassination and was kept in fairly bad conditions in jail while she awaited trial and during the trial. Um, and then after she was found guilty 
she was sentenced to be hanged and told of this sentence uh, one day before it happened, uh, along with three other conspirators, David Harold, George Atzerott, and Louis Payne, who had tried to kill William Seward, the Secretary of State at the time. She, um, there's been a lot of speculation about Mrs. Surratt's guilt and a lot of opinion, um, a lot of very varied opinion about Mrs. Surratt's guilt. And I remember when I was a kid reading all about this, and I was kind of caught up in the fervor. And I, to anyone who would say anything at all to me about anything, really, I would say, Mrs. Surratt, she's innocent. And they'd say, what? What are you talking about? And I would go on to, to say that, you know, this woman had gotten railroaded by the federal government in 1865, and what a horrible thing that was, et cetera, et cetera. Um, over the last 30 years or so, 35 years, I've done a little bit more reading, and uh, particularly this book, Manhunt by James L. Swanson. This was a bestseller a few years ago. Great book about the Lincoln conspiracy. Great book about the assassination. If you're, if you're at all interested, you should read this book. Now I've come to the conclusion that yes, Mrs. Surratt probably knew quite a bit of what was going on. Um, still though, there are very varied opinions. I looked up two books that were written about Mrs. Surratt. About a year ago I, I found these two books. One of them was just um, a complete, written by a complete Surratt apologist, who basically said, you know, the woman knew nothing about it, she was a saint, blah, blah, blah. Um, that woman was wrong. On the other hand, I, there was a book called The Assassin's Accomplice that pretty much made Mrs. Sherrod out to be totally Booth's right-hand person, um, despite Harold's help and despite Louis Payne, these other conspirators that were very involved. Um, that book had uh, some good facts in it and whatnot, but at the same time it had sort of a snide tone to it that I didn't like. And uh, the author of that book got Mrs. Surratt's burial place wrong. Uh, she said that Mrs. Surratt was ultimately buried in uh, Mount Olivet Cemetery in Baltimore, which is not true. It's Mount Olivet Cemetery in Washington, D.C. Um, I've been there, and I can tell you that, you know, I can tell you where Mrs. Surratt's buried, and it's not Baltimore. And uh, it really bothered me that uh, an author who was purporting to be an expert on this got such a basic fact wrong. So, that's Mrs. Surratt, a little bit of a historical view of uh, her role in the assassination. And um, yes, I do believe she had a role to play, as opposed to what I would have told you 35 years ago, when I would have screamed at you, she was innocent! She wasn't innocent. but. Um, Anyway, that, this, is, this is episode one of a two-part episode. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about Surat tourism. I, uh, in conjunction with various people in my life, uh, uh, Greg Christensen of the Gregory and Kimberly Christensen Foundation, uh, my old friend Joe from high school, uh, Donna, and I've, I've Donna and the kids, we, um, I've visited many of the Surat sites, many places that... Uh, you, that are associated with her life, um, places that um, are apparently haunted by Mary Surratt. And um, in the next episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But in, for this one, I just wanted to kind of give you a background, let you know who Mrs. Surratt was. And um, if you want to check out the Wikipedia entry, do some research on your own, decide for yourself how guilty or not guilty you think that she is. And uh, we'll meet next week for a, another glass of cheap red wine and uh, talk some more about Mrs. Surratt. So, there you go. Thanks for your support.